I want to say a little bit about congruence classes. Uh, we've got this idea of two numbers being congruent, and we're starting to develop the, the details of that. And it's going to be really the big thing for the rest of the course. Um, and in this chapter, they don't make a huge deal of it, but they talk about the idea of a congruence class. And I want to give a little bit of explanation um, as to why they would do that, and actually compare it to a situation which secretly is very similar, even though you've never been probably ex um, had it explained in the same way. So why the stuff about con congruence classes? Well, so. Um, just as an example, the congruence class of the number 3, mod or modulo 5, is just all the numbers that are equivalent, that are congruent, sorry, to 3 modulo 5, which means they all have the same remainder when you divide them by 5. So 3 certainly has a remainder 3 when you divide by 5. 8 does 2, 13 does 18, 23. Also, some negative numbers, negative 2, negative 7, negative 12. Those all... Um, are of the form some multiple of 5 plus 3. Okay, so here's one reason to do that, and we'll really see it come into its own in Chapter 8. We want to think of all these numbers as basically equivalent to each other in the mod 5 world, like on the planet that where, where people think mod 5, um, to use the ideas of the myth that they started the chapter with. Um, and we want to even go a little further than that, and we want to really think of this whole set of numbers um, as one single object in this world of mod 5. And chapter 8 is really m about taking it to that level of saying we're really inventing a new kind of number system. Um, and each member of this set, each actual integer in this set, is really just a different way to write the same exact quantity when we're thinking in the mod 5 world. Okay, so, huh, what is that, what is that about? And I want to compare that to a situation that you're familiar with. Um, this is, it's actually very parallel to fractions. So fractions, we know um, that, for example, the fraction 1 half is equal to the same thing as 2 fourths, is equal to 3 sixths, is equal to, let's say, minus 7 over minus 14, is equal to... There's an infinite number of ways to write that fraction. And one of the big things about learning how to deal with fractions in late elementary and early mid school is really getting into your head that these are really the same quantity, that this 2 fourths is exactly the same quantity, the same place on the number line, the same amount of stuff. It's the same thing as 1 over 2, even though it's written differently. Okay, so we would say, um, this is a fairly similar situation, we would say that these are different representations of the same number, same place on the number line, you could say. Um, and so we don't want to say, so here's something that's going to be pretty analogous to calculations we would do um, with, like when we start doing arithmetic with, with mod 5. Let's say, let me say... Uh, so let's say I have 3 plus 4, and I want to think in the mod 5 world. This is a little bit of a preview of the perspective of chapter 8. I want to take 3 plus 4, and I want to, to calculate the sum and immediately think about the, the remainder when I divide by 5. I want to really think of this as mod 5. Um, so one way to do it is I take 7, and then I recognize that's congruent. Um, I recognize that it's congruent to 2 mod 5. And here's the thing. I don't want to think of the fact that just because it happened to come to me as 7, which is bigger than 5, that that's somehow morally different from the calculation, let's say, um, 3 minus 1 equals 2. Well, that also is something whose remainder mod 5 is 2, because it's obviously 2. And it's going to be really important for us to not think of this 2, where we had to do one extra step of reduction to get it to in that really simple form. I don't want to think of that as different as this, this answer. So let me, let me compare that to fractions. Suppose somebody says, um, I'm going to take 5 sixths um, minus 1 sixth. OK. Oh, actually, no. No, minus, two, uh, minus 1 third. There we go. Um, and I'm going to say that's okay. I'm going to do a common denominator, 5, 6 minus 2, 6. So already I'm totally using 
the idea of equivalent fractions. And then uh, it's going to be 3 6. And then I reduce it to 1 half. Now, this is a fairly standard thing we often do, and we think of 1 half as a simpler way to write 3 6 because there's no common factors, and that has been useful occasionally. But we don't really think of that as a different number. And I want to point out that I don't, I really don't want to think of that. Um, we don't want to think of this answer as somehow less equal to 1 half just because it didn't come to us in the intermediate steps of the calculation literally as the number 1 over the number 2. Um, so, for example, I could have something that was presented as like 5 halves minus 4 halves, and then I just, it's already over a common denominator, the denominator is already 2, it's 1 half. Nobody's going to convince me that that 1 half is really different from this 1 half here just because I had to do an extra little simplification step to get there. Okay, So, even though we often have a little bit of a preference when we have all these equivalent fractions for one form of it, often a reduced form with um, no common factors top and bottom, these really should be on the same footing. And one clever way to do that, so one way to put all forms on the same footing, okay, is to say that this number, this position on the number line, the way we're going to think about it is to say, let's actually define it to be the set of all these guys. I look at all these pairs of numbers with a bar written in a certain traditional way with a bar. And I look at that infinite set of all the different representations of one half, and I say the number really is that set. It's a funky thing to do. It's a fairly weird um, way to describe it, but really it turns out to be just a very way, good way to make rigorous and flexible, a notion we already have, which is that these two numbers, or all of these numbers, are all the same quantity. And I don't really want to pick one out as being special. And with mods, we're going to see the equivalent of that is going to be like mod 5, 7, and 2. We want to put on exactly the same footing. 2, maybe in terms of writing it down, is a little simpler just because it's a smaller integer. We want to put them on the same footing. And so we're going to say that the congruence class of 2 mod 5 is really the whole set, and that's going to be the object of study um, when we do things carefully in the next chapter.